Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and I'm the blogger behind BrighterDarling.com. Today we're doing something a little fun. It is a makeup junkie tag. I've partnered with a few of my beauty blogging friends from Beauty Blog Coalition, which is a group of beauty bloggers that um, we share tips, tricks, and behind the scenes, like more like blog advice with each other. So if you are a beauty blogger and you're not in Beauty Blog Coalition, uh, you can click below and get more details on that. But if you're just a makeup junkie in general, wanting to get to know me a little more and see my style of beauty and makeup and like what kind of trends and things I like and dislike, then continue watching. And don't forget to watch the other girls' videos in the description box to see what their questions and answers were like. All right, let's get to it. Here. So the first one is, when did you start wearing makeup? I started wearing makeup when I was more so in eighth grade is when I really started wearing makeup because, and, and like towards the end of eighth grade, not even in the beginning, because in my eighth grade um, school picture taken in like what, September or October, I did not have a stitch of makeup on, but by the end of eighth grade, I was like pretty full glam. Like I remember at the end of eighth grade, I definitely was wearing foundation because my skin was breaking out then. Um, mascara, eyeshadow, I believe I, I, st I think that was the year we all of us in that time were like going heavy on the black line or on only the lower lash line, of course. And um, I remember just always wearing this um, Lip Smackers Clear Lip Gloss. It was like minty flavored and I loved it. Um, so that was like my go-to face. And I think like blush. I think I wore this like tawny colored L'Oreal blush a lot. Um, that was my go-to face by the end of eighth grade. And I pretty much wore the same stuff through high school even too. Um, but I do remember in sixth grade, I would take my mom's lipstick and put a little layer of it on top of my chapstick and then apply the chapstick at the school bus stop. So it looked like I was putting chapstick on, but really I was putting on the layer of lipstick. So that, that happened, but I would say eighth grade. The next question is any makeup trend you wish would end. Um, I am not a big fan of the Instagram makeup. It's just not my style. Never has been, never really will be. I don't do that on my clients. I don't do it on myself. I just don't think it's very flattering on most people. I think you can take inspiration from those techniques and adapt them to be more softer and wearable. And that's kind of what I do. But to me, I just don't see that looking very flattering. Like if you look back these 20 year old girls that are doing that now, when you look back at those photos in 20 years from now, you're gonna feel a little, you're gonna feel some sort of way about your makeup then. And I just, I never wanna look that like that. I always want my makeup to look pretty classic, pretty timeless and pretty polished. So um, the Insta Glam makeup is just not my thing. I think it's a beautiful art form and I do like watching videos, again, to take the inspiration from, but I myself do not think all these girls should be doing that on their faces. It's just a little much. That's just me, and this is my question and my opinion. All right, my favorite makeup trend on the flip side is highlighting and contouring. I know that like it was trying to phase out, but I think it was more like the really heavy stuff. Um, I will always highlight and contour my face. It just really helps me um, chisel off a few extra pounds when I just decided to go hard on the weekend or um, have a little too much salt, which happens often because I am a chip addict. But yeah, highlighting and contouring really makes a difference for my skin and my face. So it's something that I really love to teach others when I have clients and also just use on myself because I do suffer from thyroid problems and because of that my weight fluctuates a lot. Sometimes day to day you can see a difference in my face. So it's important that I can kind of like shave off a few extra pounds with some contour um, and highlight to kind of disguise that. All right, the next question is, do you have a secret technique in applying makeup? Um, I don't think so much I have a secret technique. I think the biggest, there's two big things that change the way a woman's makeup looks when, um, even when she's new at applying makeup or she doesn't really know how to do makeup. And the two things are prepping your skin appropriately and to the right tools. A lot of people don't want to invest in the skincare. And I see this time and time again, I'll use an eyeshadow palette and people are like, oh my God, I love that eyeshadow palette or I love that you know blush, or I love the way your foundation looks. And then when they try it, they say it doesn't look at all the same on them. And it's always because they're not prepping their skin properly and they're not using the right skincare and they don't wanna invest in the skincare, which it kills me because it's like, even if you buy a $50 foundation, it's not gonna look good if your skin is in bad condition. You can get a $6 foundation and have it look just as nice if you're prepping your skin right. And the same thing with the tools. You can buy you know, a $50 eyeshadow palette, but if you're using really scratchy brushes or those little cotton, not cotton, the little um, 
sponge tip things, you're not going to get a blend. It's You cannot blend through the transition with a sponge tip. You can't blend anything and make it look, you know, the way you see on Instagram and on, you know, YouTubers if you're not using at least two different eye brushes. I mean, that's just, that's just reality. And you don't have to spend a fortune on brushes. I will link two posts below on um, some core brushes I really recommend starting out with, and they're really affordable. And I've even linked different price point options. So go see that below. Um, okay. The next question is what's your dream makeup? I think my dream makeup would be, um, something that will apply my winged liner, like 3d printing style. Like I can kind of stick my face in this little like, thing. I just imagine it being like a thing and it's just like not tattoos it on. Cause I don't want anything permanent on my face, but I would just like it to just do it for me because you know, sometimes it's just hard to do. I have semi hooded lids and I love what a winged liner does for my eye shape. Cause it really kind of like lifts it up. Um, but it's very hard to do when you have that little semi hooded style eye. Uh, ba -ba -ba. next question. One makeup product you can't leave home without. This is easy for me. It's a BB cream, CC cream, or foundation. I have to have my complexion perfected because all I have to do to, for the rest of my face to feel a little bit better now that I've grown in my brows as much as I can is brush my brows up with a spoolie, do a little crimp with a lash curler on my eyelashes to help really open up my eyes more. You'll be amazed what a difference that does even if you don't wear mascara. And that's really it. Like I don't feel like I need anything else for sure other than a little complexion perk and not even so much because of the acne scarring and things like that more so because my face is so much wider than my body because of the spf and the chemical exfoliation i do that even when i'm not self tan my face is still so white so just to even things out in general um next question what was the first makeup item you ever purchased this I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 98% sure this was it. We went to Sephora in New York for my friend's 14th birthday, I believe. Like the year we all turned 14, two of my best friends did like makeovers at Sephora. Maybe it was just one. I think one did makeovers at Sephora and the other one, we did like a Manny and Petty party actually. Um, anyway, so the girl who did the party at Sephora, we went into Manhattan and went to Sephora and all got little makeovers. And then after out, we went to dinner. But, um, I remember bringing a little bit of money that my mom given, had given me. And this was when Sephora was like pretty new to the States. Like, I don't know if it was, I don't remember. It was like around 1997 that puts the age there, but around 1997, I was 14 and we went to Sephora and I remember leaving with this obnoxious neon green urban decay single pot eyeshadow and like I thought it was the coolest thing ever to me I bought it because I remember thinking I have never seen anything like this at the drugstore my mom certainly wasn't wearing anything like this I just thought it was super cool the packaging was cool the color was cool it was sparkly and green and yeah um hindsight being 2020 I probably should have purchased like a shimmery champagne shade or a bronze but um I thought it was cool and that was my first makeup product I remember purchasing the next question is where do you find creative inspiration? Um, the two places I look to the most are my other blogging friends. I think that I've become, you know, pretty close with several different beauty bloggers, not only just on YouTube, but in the um, blogging community. And I love looking at the way that they've applied their makeup and the products that they're using. It really inspires me. But when I really want to kind of like elevate it to the next level, I, w I do follow quite a few pro and celebrity makeup artists on Instagram. And I just love looking at the way that they do makeup. I always think that the makeup that celebrities do is just polished and pretty and just timeless and classic, which is what I always go for. So um, I like to look on Instagram to see what they're doing and kind of replicate that as best as I can. Okay, next one is, what is your favorite type of video to film? Um, my favorite types of videos to film are ones like this, ones that I get to just talk and, you know, I think you get to see my personality a little more. You get to get, you get to know me a little bit more. And, um, yeah, I just think they're quicker to edit. They are easy for you guys. I mean, for me, at least I know they're easy for you guys to comprehend. You're not having to watch me per se. You can be listening to this right now while you're making dinner, while you're doing your own makeup, getting ready at in the morning or while you're getting unready at night. Like you don't have to like be paying attention to my face to hear what I'm talking about. So those are the kind of videos I like. 
And my favorite types of videos to watch is the same thing. Videos that I don't necessarily have to be glued to the screen looking at to enjoy. So if you're doing a review or you're talking about a product or you're talking about favorites or you're talking about your routine, um, I like those kinds of videos because I can multitask and that's the ones that I like. But I do watch them all. I do watch tutorials. I do still watch um, demos and you know reviews, of course. I watch them all. Like There's no, no discrimination here, but my favorites are ones that I can do chores around the house with. And yeah, that's the last question. So if you guys had a good time watching this, please check out my friends in the description box below to see their answers to these questions. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I would love to have you on my channel as I'm growing. I see a lot of new faces, so I really appreciate all of your support, you guys. And I look forward to next week's video. It's going to be a fun one. So I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great one. Bye.